Live from the Talking Joe Studios. It's Talking Joe with Chief and Ben. Hey, 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 it's the Chief. Join Mama Buddy. It's me, it's Ben. It's half term. I've gone wild. What does that mean for you, though? Because you're a stay at home, you're a stay home dad. Doesn't mean anything, does it? Well, no, it does because the kids are at home. Well, no, I mean, I am a stay at home dad, but I work from home, so it's Emma's in New York at the moment, so it's a bit full on. But I guess your little one isn't even at school, is she? No, she's in nursery, so uh, none of that half term hijinks for the chief. Do they they not have half terms at nursery? I guess they don't. (laughs) Some of them do, uh, but. The one that we use doesn't, you can still go to half term, so you right. still go there during half term, yeah. What have you been up to? Um, been doing some painting, uh, posted up that picture of Bosk and the Hoth Wampers. I was going to say, not your house. For the, no, no. <laughs> Star Wars Imperial Assault, baby. <laughs> that was before the house. Miniatures. Um, miniatures, we- yeah, I've got, I'm going to probably do Jabba this week, maybe an ATST. Jabba. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you put on special goggles for that? So you can uh, zoom in. I don't know what you're talking about. As what, like in... telescopic lenses? Well, it's intricate, is that a thing? isn't it? It's intricate. Is that a thing? I don't know. Well, no, I don't. No, when no, I no. see people Naked doing eye. that, they've got like, um, usually they have a like a big weight and then like a bendy magnifying glass. Okay. Have not, you not no. seen that? And then they're not... looking through that. Never seen because, that. Because it's so intricate, some of the stuff you're doing. Yeah, God, I mean, you I'm, must not, have a I'm steady not, hand. I'm not a uh, pro painter by any means, you know, but, you know, I'm fairly pleased with the results but that's I guess just, a yeah. Wampa is um you're just Fairly lashing easy, yeah. it on <laughs> yeah it's pretty easy <laughs> Bosk though Bosk looked pretty um Bosk looked good didn't he yeah really good yeah, yeah. I like how much you, you you know you do the base plates really well yeah I've got some that's good key got some good uh, c- uh Citadel uh paints they do these kind of textured paints which are specifically for bases so you can get two types one is I used a uh one for the Wampa and some other ones I've used, which are kind of gritty, almost I've got sand in the in the paint. Um, mm, then they've got these based. other ones where you put a thick layer on, you wait, and then the base actually cracks, oh. um, like dried mud or something like that. So I could tell they're they're definitely not lead, are they? These things? No, no, that's a that's you know, metal miniatures is kind of a thing of the past nowadays. Is, generally, is it? It's kind of resin. Plastic right. is, is just the done because thing. Because of what cost, I guess. Can, uh, I guess cost, but you can also get uh, more defined, better sculpts. You can get more of detail course. in the sculpt than you can with metal. The weight was nice though, wasn't it? Oh, weight was nice, yeah. We, get, we used to get all those uh, Games Workshop stuff. Yeah, yeah Warhammer yeah. 40Ks. You know Cool, it. man. What, yeah. also, watched, also watched a movie, Spy. I don't know if you've seen that movie. Oh, I don't like those sorts of things. It was um, a silly one, yeah? So it's a it's the dude who did um, is it Paul Feige or Feige Feige yeah Feige okay he's, he's done yeah I he's don't, done a lot of things hasn't he done a lot of things um, that sort of comedy like bridesmaids stuff and things, bridesmaids or? did he do Ghostbusters Ugh, shut up the remake he did uh, I don't know you um, see the trailer for the new Ghostbusters I have the teaser yeah yeah tease yeah. me. Tease me, but anyway, Spy. I thought this is going to be an absolute load of junk. Melissa McCarthy is the lead. She's like a, a handler for Jude Law's spy. She's like office based, and she has to end up going into the field. So it's it's kind of a, it's parody ish of Bond, you know. But yeah, it got good reviews. I think I actually, in the end, really enjoyed it. The I was like, this is going to be junk, and I actually read, and spy. Jason Statham is a comedy legend. I didn't even know he's obviously is he the bad guy in it is he? I guess. No, he's he's a secret agent that basically oh. just swears all the time, effing okay. and blinding and uh yeah. Oh, I've it's... been watching films, nothing quite as contemporary as that. I've been uh, I went back and did the Terminator films. Okay, interesting. <laughs> yep, did Terminator one and last night I did T two. Where are you stopping? Right there. Oh, do you know what? I'm actually after this. I'm going to put T three on. I'm actually quite excited. And then you're stopping, surely. I... Then I'm going to do Salad Nation. And then after that, I'll do Jenny Smith. Right. <laughs> so, Salad Nation is Salvation. <laughs> Terminator, Genesis. And what's Jenny... Oh, okay, I, haven't, okay. I haven't made those up. Those are actually in the zeitgeist. <laughs> are they? I've yeah. not heard that before. But yeah. I'm out of touch with uh, now, the youth of today. I, what I, people tell me, I've got friends that really defend T3, and they yes. basically say it's a natural progression from T2. Because I think you forget how 
D2 is so <laughs> different from that first film. Yeah. It's um and such a big gap. It's like 8 9 years. And how are you what, you know, do you do you prefer it if you've got to watch one of them again, which one are you watching? I'm I'm definitely doing the first one. Really? It's, yeah, it's a proper slash film. No growing so up, good. we preferred T2. Yeah, but hey, I'm not they're both five star films for yeah. me. Hey, hey, I tell you what I did do though. I got totally sorted and organized for award season. Did wow, you a, that's you big news. Name? Basically, I have dusted off the tux. Uh I've got a I've got a Hawaiian shirt on um nice. with a rainbow colored bow tie. Uh, I'm looking out into the crowd. I see lots of familiar faces. Uh, who joined us for award season? Hey, Brad, how you doing there? Good man. Nice, nice to see you arriving. Uh, <laughs> like I see this. George, George, Mr. Clooney. Thank you for turning up. Um, they're not up for any awards, obviously, but they're just here to see the show. Chief, you should see what I'm wearing, and I'm not actually joking. I look like <laughs> Kevin Smith right now. I've got a double XL uh, Chicago Red Wings. Strong. No, no, no. Sorry, not not Chicago. Um, Blackhawks. Blackhawks. I've Jesus. got. I wanted Detroit, Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, because they're my team. But obviously, I was in Chicago. And uh, we say you say they're your team because obviously we used to play NHL hockey '94 yes. on the Mega Drive. Yeah, Steve yeah. Eisenman, yeah, uh, Chicarelli, yeah, Dino. Yeah, you know um, it. So I'm in a, a replica ice hockey jersey. It was about 260 bucks. Jeepers! Like hundreds of pounds. That's going and out for breakfast money, right there. It's, it's got like it's the ones that you actually re- wear on the ice. So I thought I'd wear it to award season like Kevin Smith. (laughs) Yeah, nice. (laughs) Well, we're all here, so uh, we'll probably get a little fanfare here. I can hear the horns blowing. So it's time for our... Get on with the ceremony! Second awards show of this Every Joe Story Ever tenure, um, where we will be covering the year of 1984 and the back half of 1983. Did we get um, a name for these as well? Oh, my goodness. I had one job and I did not come up with that. Yeah, well... You, did you think of anything? Well, I, I said one, but he got shot down. What did you say? The well, Golden the gold, Joes. Or... The Golden Joes. <laughs> That's a strong All name. Right, we'll have geez. it, we'll have it. The Golden Joes. All right, so any particular order you want to run down these in or should I just do it as I've written down? Well, I'll kick us off. I think it makes sense to do issue first okay that is that's the headline one though we'll go with the headliner then yeah oh i see what you mean actually no maybe you're right maybe we should build up and go the other way so let's actually start with uh the listeners category which was listeners category we had a few suggestions here and we're actually going to go with uh cavball customs on instagram who uh gave us this category and he said best new vehicle that's a that's solid. Cavball underscore customs. Check him I, out. He's got I a good account guy, there. I think he segued over to Ben Flying Retro. I'm sure I've seen him pop top up. Top man, top man. So best mm. new vehicle. Uh, quite a few to choose from. Don't forget we're going from issues 16 to 30. That's our that's our margin here. Um, There's a lot to choose from. Just to give from. you an idea, we've got things like the Rattler, which makes an appearance in. Obviously, it, it's a big issue in 34, but it does make an appearance in 22 at G- General Flag's uh, funeral. You've got yeah. the Whale, which is a big one. The the Moccasin for Cobra. Uh, yeah. We could even include that Cobra Glider. The uh, Snake Eyes gets away from Destro's Castle in, in 21. Yeah. Um, if you want to say that stupid Dr. Venom snake outfit, as in the S-N-A-K-E, whatever that stood for. Definitely don't want to say that. Um, there's also the vehicle, which name escapes me, from issue 24, which Hawk jumps in when he's chasing Cobra Commander. What's oh, that? yeah, that's a classic. What oh, is that? That's the, really annoyed me. The, oh, that's man. really annoyed me. Oh, we're a shambles. Car, that was well, in the car, we're a shambles. That, that was the car, in the cartoon a yeah. lot. Um, so uh, have you got a, a favourite there or a top two? What's, what's, what's yeah, your yeah. winner? So, I, I know what your winner is, but... No, because I don't think you do. So it was it was between the two. Whale. It was between two. Yes. And I essentially, I kind of sort of slipped into toys and I was very attached to the whale. My, you know, one of my best mates had it. Yep. We used to use it in setups and it is awesome. Yes. So I did go with the whale and that was, even though that was introduced pretty late on, um, and honourable mention was the Rattler. Yes. Um, I think I am going to go. I think I know what you're going to go with. Well, go on. Water moccasin. 
No, that is an honourable mention. Oh. Uh, but my winner is the Rattler, even though it doesn't have a massive amount of page time in issue 22. When it comes to us reviewing the next lot, it's not going to be a new vehicle. So it's no, not and I, count I thought that as well. So I'm giving it to the Rattler with an honourable mention to the Moccasin. Because let's face it, it's, it's effectively in every issue. We could have uh, we could have had Zartan's Swamp Skier in there as well if we wanted to. But yeah, I've actually got that. I haven't got Zartan. Got I've that. got I've got it's Zartan. Annoying. I've got his uh, face change. I've got the Swamp Skier, but I'm missing the handlebars. Oh, dude, I've got those. <laughs> you can have those. <laughs> then you um, yourself a full set. Okay, let's uh, let's move on to best cover. What do you think? Yeah, I reckon that's that's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna let's switch it up. You go first on this one. Okay, I've got um, I've actually got several on my board here. So I've got a winner, and I've got a honourable mention as well, and a runner-up. So okay. the uh, honourable mention is uh, issue twenty-three, which I think is probably going to be your favourite one. It's the one with Cobra Commander on the front, roadblock uh, with roadblock and clutch. Yeah, that's, you said it that's at the time. My... You said it was a very kind of modern style cover yeah that's my honorable mention as well okay interesting it did it came close it did come yeah. close uh, but then my... i actually sat down and looked at it more and i was like no okay i've actually got a first runner up here oh, uh, okay. which is uh, issue 22 which is destro on the cover he's holding the rattler and he's got all the chess pieces yeah that's a good one uh, and my winner is issue 16 oh, i see I, I do you remember that one well no because i looked at I looked at all of them and I just remember going like squizzing past yep. those earlier ones. Um, so, so what is that? It's not this, the TV screen one, is it? What is it? I know, this is the one where um, uh, Destro and Hawk are on the, on the hiss on the front cover and they're fighting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, kind of an old schooly one. There's planes in the background, Cobra Commanders in the hiss tank. Um, just really, I don't know, just that image really, really hit home for me. We'll post these images up on the social media so you can, if you haven't got them to hand, you'll know which ones we're talking See, about. See, my favourite cover surprised me because I think we didn't really, when we were talking about this particular issue, we didn't really talk about the cover, I don't think, for very long. Go on. But I've actually gone for Silent Interlude, issue 21, Snake Eyes in full commando garb. Rappling up the wall. Yeah. It's a good one. He's, he's I, kind well, of bathed in the them... sunlight, isn't he? Or the, the not the sunlight, the light from the from the from the castle. Yeah, yeah. but I don't remember us saying that we loved it no. when we were when we were reviewing that issue. But and anyway, we'll post this up, and um, our buddy, sh- friend of the show, Mark Seddon, actually had a cover recreation um, of this issue done uh, by oh, nice. Larry Harmer, I think it was, and then it's. Uh, I think it was Larry who did it. He'll correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, it's inked by Guillermo Ortega. So we'll post that up as a comparison piece. But yeah. Cool. Okay, so artist. Artist. So here are the choices. Um, just to break down the, the categories, the time period we're looking at. Mike Vosberg did issues 16 to 19, 22 to 25. Uh, Jeff Isherwood just did a fill-in issue on issue 20. Larry Harmer did issues 21 and 26. Russ Heath did just issue 24, and Frank Springer did 25 to 27. Uh, uh, sorry, 25 and 27 to 30. So the main bulk here, Frank Springer did five issues, Mike Bosford did six issues, and then other guys in between. Yeah. See, now I think he... I've... I don't, I'm not saying I regret my choices, but were you thinking more about runs and sort of bodies of work or were you looking at individual issues that is very tough because i had it i'm a this is really tough this is probably the toughest category for me um russ heath did an amazing job on issue 24 but so he's my be, honorable mention but just because he did one issue i'm not i he doesn't get anything from me <laughs> he doesn't i was going to say he doesn't get anything from me he gets kudos and he gets a, a tip of the cap because he's an amazing artist yeah so i like googled him and i was like oh yeah. geez he, he literally didn't do anything he inked like issue 64 i yeah. think and in gi joe but he did a lot of you know his body of work is big, yeah, he especially did. a lot of military stuff and all that kind of yeah but um, that issue is insane it is very good so it's very good um however like, i think mike vosberg did some of his best work um so i've actually got see i didn't like yeah okay. you, i've I've got dual dual runners up here i've got mike vosberg and i'm a big 
Frank Springer fan, so I've actually got those two as joint runners-up, and I've actually got Larry Harmer as my top, even though he only did issue 21 and 26. See, yeah, same. I've got Larry Harmer as well, just because... I guess I was looking at it, misinterpreted the kind of question, I was looking at it as favourite art, not right. artist, I guess, and okay. I was looking at issues. Yeah. And you can't... That, that one is just a cut above, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, in terms of the, like, the quality... Yeah. Um and I do remember reading that thinking, "Oh my god, I wish I wish he'd stay on and do more because these yeah. looking this looks insane." But then I had Russ Heath as honorable mention. Yeah. Okay. That issue 24. But then when I googled him, I, I was like, "Oh man. Just did that one." Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty random. Shame. But good art all round, you know. I'm, I'm you know, no, no shame in being an honorable runner up or, you know, whatever yeah. because top art. Um so we've got, okay, we, we've we got two well categories some... left. We've got best issue and we've got best Joe. Oh, we do Joe. I we'll think, do Joe we? next. Yeah. Okay, so this is not necessarily best new Joe. This is just best Joe from that run of issues. Yeah, so I think we... It doesn't we, have to be have int- been introduced in this in this run. Let's face it, we've both got the same. I've got two names on my page. Well, I th- so I've got a runner-up and a and a winner because of exactly what you just said. He's not my favourite Joe, but in those issues that we're talking about, yep. it's, it's got to be Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes be. is my runner-up. Wow, my God! Yeah, that's bold. So you didn't have a runner-up, nothing. You just have one name on your no, page. No, no, I've got I've got a lot of honourable mentions. Okay, so I'll go with mine. Snake Eyes is my honourable mention. I think. Obviously, because of issue 21 and issues 26 and 27, uh, with that backstory, you know, he doesn't necessarily do much, though. In in issue 26 and 27, well, 26 especially, he doesn't necessarily do much the character of Snake Eyes. It's just telling the story of him in Vietnam and going back to Japan with Tommy, etc. And it's more the story around him, especially the hard master and, and, and Tommy and all that kind of stuff. So... But obviously in 27, there's that great fight scene with him in Storm Shadow on the subway. Um, but generally, you know, I obviously love Snake Eyes, but honourable mention, my favourite is Roadblock. Ah, uh, yeah, I could have love seen that Love me as some well. Roadblock. Yeah. It's just, he... a, it's just a jokey, badass, tough guy who's kind of got a quip for everyone. You know, he's, he's, he's toting a 50 cow and just gunning people down. Just love Yeah, he man. kind of gets, he is consistent through that run of issues yeah. really isn't he he's yeah. in ev- he's I'll be surprised I'll be surprised if he's not a, a name on my page the next time we do awards season as well yeah but he um, seems to be like he's really kind of earned his spot there he's earned his stripes yeah he kind so, of I'm not ever expecting to go any deeper with him than what we have though no no do you know what I mean yeah yeah. So, so I mean, we learn him... late, we learn later. Obviously, this only goes up to issue thirty, but we learn later as we covered in the issues the previous week that he actually was in the choir and he was a Boy yeah. Scout. So he does, you know, keeps deepening. But you know, <laughs> so anyway, you got Snake Eyes at the top of the heap. Who, who else would you like to give On, a shout? Honorable out to? mentions: I have got Roadblock, yep. Wild Bill, ah, and yes. Torpedo. Okay, good yeah, choices. Big fan of Torpedo. Yes, and he features quite heavily. And obviously, he was in some of those scenes where he was in full. Full yeah. scuba flipper gear on land. Yeah. How can yeah. you not love that? But it's difficult to stop when you're doing honourable mentions because all of the kind of secondary characters are so awesome. Yeah. It's really it's really difficult to stop. But if I had to put it down to three, those would be them. So, so. I think we should have guesses at what each other's favourite issue is. You can try and guess mine. Okay. I, I've got a feeling... You have gone silent interlude. Uh, I have not gone silent interlude. Okay. Uh, I don't want to keep guessing because no. I don't want to under underplay it. But um, do you want to have a pop at which one I've gone for? I think you're going to know. Um, it's issue 24. The commander is. escapes. <laughs> it is a cracking issue. The commander's been captured. You know they're you in that, they're in that high Sierras or wherever they are. The Rockies, wherever they are. Um, they set up a portable base. Storm Shadow. I love the bit in the plane where Storm Shadow's tracking where the commander is. Oh yeah, it's um, great. It's yeah. great. I think it's my. Is it my third, second of all time? Is yeah, it? it's your second of all time. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. above Silent Interlude. Yeah, it's just it's very exciting, very yeah. exciting. Yeah. So I'll tell you what mine is. So first runner up, um, I've actually gone for 
issue 18, uh, which is the part of the Cobra's Plan Revealed series. Uh, it's the one where they're all rushing to the uh, the book factory and you get those ah. panels. Basically, Destro realises that Baroness is on the plane uh, and you get those big vertical panels. Yeah, yeah, um, I do remember it. So that's honourable mention. First one up is issue 28, which is the issue with guest art by Marie Severin. Um, she just did one. Oh, we oh did, yeah, actually, yeah. So, yes, I apologise. I didn't put her name down as the artist. She penciled issue 28. Um, do you remember that one? That's the one where they're escaping from Zata, from the swamp. Yeah, um, I do. So, These are surprising me. And then uh, I have uh, issue 26 as my top issue, which is the first part of the Origin of Snake Eyes. Okay, and I do remember you. Ago. I know you preferred issue 27 remember, from the pair. Yeah, you were... Uh, really really excited about that one but yeah. where so you haven't even got silent interlude as an honorable silent mention in, silent interlude would well it'd be their honorable mention it'd be t- honorable mention tied third yeah yeah that's my honorable mention yep um it's difficult because sometimes you just sort of think of the ones you've read yeah you know yeah. most recently yeah okay. I, i'm definitely getting a feeling for the types of issues you like now right for sure and i think when we start talking about this week's issues, yep. you're going to understand the types that I like. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, it's a good. That was a good show. That was a good, good show. show. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, stay for the after party. Uh, there'll be uh, uh, ham sandwiches and some Yo-Jo lemonades. Colas. Yojo colas. Um, yeah, and we will see everyone next time for the awards ceremony, where we'll be covering uh, years 1985 and 1986. <laughs> Inside Chief's mind. Ah. People who turn up to meetings late or don't even turn up. Uh, okay, so so you schedule meetings. you schedule a meeting. You schedule a meeting. You know, maybe at work. Let's say, for example, and uh, you sent meetings. out the invites. And um, you've got three options when you get that invite. You've got a yes, you've got a no, you've got a maybe. Tentative. First of all, people that don't even reply. I don't like those people. Because you Chief, left me in limbo. Are you turning up, up or are you though, not? It, secondly, meetings, secondly, too many of them. secondly, if you put yes, then turn up. Okay. Thirdly, if you put yes, don't turn up halfway through the meeting. Meetings are so annoying. They're so overdone, though, Chief, in this day and age. Yeah. They, people have meetings when they don't even need to. Yeah. So Sometimes you have meetings to discuss having meetings. And pe- I was pretty casual in my day. I mean, because they're just, it's like the room's over there. Yeah, yes, you, you can dip in and out. I think you can gauge whether it's a really important meeting or not. Is right. this one that you were chairing, then? It's, it's one. No, actually, today, no, it wasn't. Um, it was someone else's meeting, but it was quite an important meeting. Um, mm. for certain individuals hopefully who are not listening to this podcast did you make your feelings known at the meeting um i i kind of you know suggested that you know people needed oh, to turn up here. but <laughs> let's not dwell on it let's not dwell on it i'm over it now. so how many people how, how many no shows um i think there was one. Oh, jeez you know, sweating over nothing well, there. there's only four people supposed to be in the meeting Man, the less people that come, the better. I mean, the yeah. sooner you can get out of there. Yeah, I guess so. What was it hour? It was half an hour. Oh, jeez. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, That's all right. You, you, you know, in, going inside your mind's not as scary as it was for the first ten eps. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Then my my, my mission is to crank it up the scariness. No. Crank up the horrors. I, I don't want you to become a. I don't want you to be nasty out there on the streets. Right. Okay. <laughs> Carrying nunchucks around. Yeah. Um, I have to catch up with Emma and just make sure that she still is disagreeing with every single one. What were right. we on episode? What is this? Episode fourteen. Episode fourteen, my man. My lord! All right, buddy. Have you read any comics in the last week? Are you talking specifically GI Joe? Yes, I have. Let's do it. So we have read this week issues forty, forty-one of Real American Hero, and we've read Yearbook Two. So okay, let what, me stop you there, Chief, because something crazy happened with me reading these comics. Tell me. I, I'm hoping you can uh, shed some light on this. So, I sat down to read them. I started digital, yeah? So I had one issue to go on digital. 
Then I finished that and I was like, right, I'll move so, on uh, so, to... So the trade you were in only had up to issue 40 uh, and then you had to switch to the next trade which started with 41. Yes, except I picked up the tangible trade. It did not start with issue 41. What? It start, started with issue 42. Holy Moses. And it's a, it's a Marvel trade. And then I thought, oh, okay, maybe I'll, I'll go back to my, you know, digital. Yep. And maybe I just missed no, an issue. No, that stopped and at it, 40. And I was like, okay, what's going on here? So then I Googled it and I was like, Jesus, Gungo's on the cover. I was like, there's an issue out there. Yeah. What, what? I, was like, I don't understand why I haven't got it. And then I actually just found it on um, readcomicsonline.com. Gotcha. Right. Just a free version of it. Yeah. But uh, a bit strange. It must have something to do with crossing over between... Uh, so I reckon Marvel and IDW. I reckon if you had the IDW trade, it would have gone up to it would have started on forty one. It must do, surely. Yeah. yeah, because you're wait a minute, you're the Marvel trade started on forty two, but you if you had the Marvel trade volume four, that probably would have gone up to forty one. It was an admin error. Oh good goodness but gracious. It was a bit stressful. Yes. I can only imagine the pain you suffered there inside Ben's mind. Is there? And then I was like, even is there an issue? Is there an yeah. issue 41? Does yeah. it exist? And right. It very much does. <laughs> issue 40, great cover. Roadblock yes. on the front, 50 cow, big old image. Uh, yeah, there it he looks, is. yeah, very bright, bold. His gun is smoking. Yeah. This is October 1985. Script Larry Harmer, pencils Rod Wiggum, inks Andy Mazinski, Joe Rosen's on lettering, and George Russos is on colours. Yeah. This is... Do you want to give us a synopsis of this issue and then we'll discuss it? Yep, so the Joes are setting up a portable HQ in the Gulf of Mexico. Which was a toy, wasn't it? Which was a toy, yes, yes. Big um, feature in the cartoons as well. And this is all part of an elaborate Cobra trap, uh, Cobra a plan. So, But I'll give the basic synopsis for both these issues. Um, they They... Cobra want the G.I. Joes to help them create a Cobra Island. Yeah. Is the basis of this whole thing. And but, but they don't want to drop the the charges, the bombs themselves no, for some reason. No, that's that's one of the points I wanted to mention. Uh, there's elaborate, elaborate plans from Cobra, which is something they could have done themselves. Now, I can only assume that it's some kind of legal technicality that if they had triggered the San Andreas fault line themselves... Well, not the San Andreas fault line, um, the the Gulf Coast co- fault line. Um, that, of course, San Andreas is on the west coast of America, isn't it? Um, if they had triggered the Gulf Coast fault line, would they have not been able to lay claim to this as a legal piece of land or something? There's something technicalities there. Um, yeah, it is a very risky plan because and also the Joes, the Joes almost launch a nuke. <laughs> Jeepers, man! This is cr- this first issue is all about. Um, decompressed storytelling. It's very much like a 2000 AD story where, uh, you know, in that there's lots of six page stories where the writer has to tell so much story in six pages. And here you get a, a mammoth amount of story in this first 22 page issue. Um, yeah. It and felt it's, it's like... also strange that the Joes are putting a portable HQ out in the Gulf Coast based on what? based on they found some documents in Candy's dad's basement and they're like, holy moly, we better get a portable base out in the Gulf Coast. Well, yeah, I think what actually happened before this issue came out is Hasbro got on the blower and said, Larry, we've got a new toy, get it in the comics. Well, not only that, we got a lot of stuff. We got shipwreck, we got barbecue, we got hydrofoils. They're all coming on the shelf. Yeah. Now you better get them into this this issue. Yeah, because we saw this issue, this issue is actually called hydrofoil. We saw the hydrofoils back in issue thirty six, but they yeah. weren't fleshed out really. No, you just know, from a distance, wasn't it? Just in the distance, and it was kind of like you know, was that an inventory issue? Um, and this is where we really see them for the first time. I don't know if I like shipwreck or not. I think you asked me this before, I, no, no, way no, no, back, yeah. and I said yes, of course I do. But I'm not no, sure. Let's get into it because shipwreck basically says lubbers. He ship shape and much. swab the deck about 10 times i know but i'm actually going to be a bit kinder to him because i remember him it, we see where he goes i don't know how much i'm going to be able to handle of him yep. but in this issue i thought he was quite funny and he's just a ball buster yeah yeah he is so, breaking your balls yeah i think he was very goonish in the cartoon right 
But um, you're more yeah, of an seems, expert on the cartoon well, than me. He's he's pretty handy here, isn't he? he? Knows what he's doing. Yeah, and he's got a funny face. I like it. <laughs> I mean, this <laughs> I issue. In this let's issue. not downplay that. This issue, obviously, the, the the main focus is is this thing. But there's also a subplot going on with Buzzer and Candy. Yeah, it's but Buzzer's Australian. Yeah, yeah, and I actually preferred that stuff. I preferred the Buzzer Candy stuff to the to this Cobra Island shenanigans. No, that's bullshit, Chief. No, I no I'm not a massive fan of this issue. I'll be honest with you. Well, Chief, when it comes to the OJ curves, I'm going to blow your doors off. Okay. Okay. We this... found the type of issue you like then, I guess. Well, I think I can't be sure. I'm going to do some research. Maybe the listeners can do some research as well. But I, yeah. when I was reading these two issues, they were reminding me of episodes of the cartoon. Okay. Even down, Even down to some of the dialogue. Really? When I was reading it, I was getting deja vu. And then I was like, is it just because I've read this a lot before but um it was a nice feeling yeah whatever it was yeah i mean <laughs> there are a couple of things that i do like in this issue no I, me saying i don't like it is that's an over exaggeration i do like it but um a couple of things that i really like is just going back to shipwreck quickly there's a cool bit where um he's he's dishing out you know beef to everyone and uh someone opens the hatch it's barbecue and he comes out shipwreck in that scene he pulls a gun and he pulls a shooter on him he's about to blow barbecue's head off yeah, barbecue's a strange way. He's just he? a Joe. A surely he knows that. Surely Shira knows that anyone on this platform is a Joe. Yeah, but, about but barbecue does look like a right chump. Yeah, he does a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another thing I like is um, the Cobra submarine that's you know uh, at the beginning. It then docks into a sunken ship, which is called the Arbco Star. Arbco being obviously an anagram of Cobra. Yeah. So Cobra had. A massive tanker that somehow has sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Um, yes. And they've also got a massive underground bunker. Yeah. Kind of got... like um, Stromberg in uh, Spy Who Loved Me. Yeah, very similar. I was getting massive nostalgia pangs with the uh, Crimson Guard guy. Oh, uh, yeah. Who looks like of... Jack Nicholson. Yes. It's, well, in that bottom left panel, yeah. he, he just is Jack Nicholson there, isn't he? Yeah. Very Joker-ish. Um, I feel like already the Crimson Twins are kind of been pushed found to their... the. They've been pushed to well, the side. If I just remember these issues correctly, they're they're effectively just always there. Yeah, they're always in the background and they finish each other's sort of sentences. Yeah, I don't know. I could be wrong. See what happens yeah. with them. But um, let's just quickly wrap up the the buzzer bit because he obviously oh, yeah. plays a little bit. There's a there's a strange bit because he's obviously been captured from when. Rock and Roll. Remember Rock and Roll had that chase with him? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. They, they captured Buzzer. Um, and then obviously he's now been interrogated. But there's a scene where Hawk's on the phone to General Austin. Yeah. And yeah. they basically says, yeah, we've got to let him go. You know, some red tape or whatever. And Hawk actually says, yeah, we've got, we're holding him hostage in the pit. And Buzzer's literally right next to him. So I'm thinking, wait a minute. You just told Buzzer he's been held in the pit and then you're just going to release him. So now Buzzer knows where the pit is. Yeah, that mm. no or not? I yeah, know. no. I think if you follow that thread through, yeah. yes, you may be the first person yeah. to ever do it. I don't know. And then Buzzer <laughs> basically, uh, it's quality bit. He's only gone about ten yards in this penitentiary jail bus, and he's already escaped. He's killed. He's knocked out some guards. One of them's gone flying through the window, and now, oh, that's so he, good though. He's when now, he smashes on the anchors. He's, he... he's now uh, driving off in a in a prison bus with candy. Yeah, I mean, he sends that guy right through the goddamn windshield. Yeah, it's pretty harsh. Uh, yeah but anyway back to the back to the main plot um this is where um is it professor or dr apple it's professor apple this is candy's dad yeah um yeah. appel a double p he doesn't seem too bothered about her his master plan is to turn on some kind of sonar device and kill all the fish yes and so then yeah. the joes their main Correct. panic is that with all the fish dead this region is going to wither we better nuke the place. Yeah, we go, they go straight to nukes. Yeah. But then they, they, they soon go off the nukes pretty quick, don't they? Yeah. When they figure out that it's, it's about poundage. Yeah, it's about poundage. Got... Doc basically tells them, <laughs> look, let's just load up every conventional bomb we can get onto these <laughs> sky strikers. Because yeah. there's, a, there's a couple of, couple of bits I just want to mention here again. Really, really cool panel. Uh, all the fish are dead. There's a panel bottom left and Snake Eyes is running towards the camera 
with the other Joes in the background. Just really like the way he's drawn. That's it. It's okay. Simple as yeah. that. And there's a scene which whether this is not accurate in so much as the toy couldn't do it and logistically size wise don't know if it's possible, but the shark launches out of the front of the whale. Deep yeah. Deep Six's vehicle launches out the front of the whale. Yeah, it's super cool. There's no way that ever happened. No, because I had the it. shark toy and it was not a fit in the whale. Yeah, and then, um, you know, we get some hydrofoil action. Hydrofoils some attack nice the pages. battle platform. Really nice pages there. Um, overconfident and then barbecue and shipwreck take them down. Yeah. But nice. No, R- yeah. Rod Wiggum is on fire penciling this issue. Lovely silhouetted stuff. Uh, lovely explosions of quality or the, the shade in the shadow. Really, really nice stuff. Yeah, and then they, uh, do you like the bit where they um, they send up Ace? Yes. Oh, actually, I'm, I'm confused. That, no, I was, I was actually thinking that was a different bit. I was thinking uh, of the next issue. Oh, uh, the, yeah, the first he's bit got, where you see Ace here is like, um, it's scary. I've never loaded one of these babes on yeah. the reel before. He's talking about the nuke. And the Ace That's is like, uh, then we're even. I've never dropped one. And at this point, oh. you still think they're going to launch the nukes. And that's when Doc comes up with the, the other plan, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then they do it. They drop the, you know, the demolition. They, they drop, drop the it. demolition. And then, uh, yeah, the sensors show tremors on the ocean floor. We've aggravated a fault line. And then Cobra are like, yes, we tricked, the, we tricked those stupid Joes. That's a goddamn good ending. It's a good ending. Massive cliffhanger um, leading into issue 41 which is, like yes. you said, gung-ho on the cover with snake eyes and some of it tripwires there, I think. They're looking, a world of hurt, aren't they? shell-shocked. Not over-fussed on this cover, I'll be honest. No, it's a strange one. It doesn't actually seem... I don't know. Proportions seem a little bit off. Don't know. Yeah. But you open that first page and oh, boom, you've got on. a Larry Harmer special dictated splash page. Uh, uh, this is a ginormous tidal wave coming over to the whale. Yeah, I've got a massive phobia of waves. Have you? Huge. Thought you were a surfer, weren't you? No. No, I did, no, but I'm, uh, sp- specifically tidal waves. You got and, a, uh, a fear <laughs> of tidal waves. Yeah. How often does that? Like, uh, how often does I've, that visit you in your regular life? Well, I've got I had like this recurring dream about one, which is terrifying. And then my friends used to, they know about this. They always used to send me these like YouTube clips of awful tidal waves. Oh right. And then it's an actual problem. Films, it's an actual problem. So there's so films I can't watch because of it. Deep Impact is a horrible one in that. Right. I mean, it's a bad film. You don't want to watch it anyway. No. Uh, 2012, there's yep. just awful one in that. Yeah. There's awful as in scary. Yeah. It's right. big. It's real big. Okay. And then there's some brutal ones in uh, Interstellar. I just can't handle it. Okay. But uh, so I saw Is that, that a thing? Like, is that like an actual, what's the name? Has that got a name, that phobia? Must have. So scared of big ass waves that's your, that's your job that's your job this week listeners uh find us what the, the phobia of tidal waves is called yes yeah, it's, it's not tsunamis it's not like heavy tides it has to have that big wave right um but anyway that's a heck of a intro i was so stoked to be really i was well excited to read this after right. that last ending yeah yeah i have to say i like the fact um, that i like the fact that um they've built into the cobra ship that's the sunken tanker they've built in some sort of stabilizing gyro arms that come out it keeps changing yeah. <laughs> that thing that they got yeah. that's it's some got engineering massive... going on there yeah to be fair they don't really sort of show you the 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 land mass actually coming out do they no no it just it just happens yeah and then the carnage sets off with a. Uh, you know, you're big. So, how did you feel reading this issue? With the, you're okay reading about was, tidal waves. Well, I was a little bit stressed, but okay. it, it it was such an exciting issue. Yeah. They just had to I, strap I, themselves down. Yeah, I and was like, that's gonna batter that. Uh, you know, that yeah. bloody oil rig. Well, this got. is this harkens back to a, a key bit from the first issue, which is quite funny, because someone says we better hope the boys, you know, tightened all the nuts on this battle platform, because if you go back to the previous issue. It's quite funny. There's several Joes carrying around massive spanners. Um, yeah, wrenches, or man. Or wrenches, if you, I guess, if you're in the US. We've got American listeners. Um, spanner slash wrench. They're carrying around these like jumbo oversized things, and we're led to believe that they just hand-tightened all these nuts. Mate, they didn't use any, any automated. <laughs> you could get a hell of a lever on those, but no yeah, automation for never... tightening these nuts. Look, Chief, it's I've just actually... Joe, Joe Muscle. Dude, I've used a big wrench. The leverage you've got on that. Okay. You, once you go, it's not hand tight, it's body tight. Right, okay. Once you've t- 
tightened a bolt with one of those. All right, all right. I'll take your word for it. I tell you, a shipwreck would have no problems with my the tightness of my bolts. No, okay. <laughs> I mean, they did survive. They did, The battle platform did survive. It's looking, there's a page here where it's the worst for wear. You know, all the Joes yeah. are out of it and that it's kind of tilted and i was worried for him i thought we might lose some peeps yeah, yeah. didn't I lose any say. peeps here because and that's the other thing there's a lot of guys in this issue you've got tripwire uh stalkers there snake eyes uh oh, snow dude, job recondo it... cutter you know it's a big list it's probably the biggest list of joes we've had in a single issue yeah well he well there's a really cool bit coming up where he, he's just like oh you know i want everyone on this yeah yeah everyone's got to come yeah. even the injured yeah because they're but, basically uh, you know they're they're you know the la- cobra is there's a cool scene of Cobra where all the sides of the tanker are going down. All the vehicles are coming at his tanks, oh, stinger vehicles, uh, fangs, is, rattlers. Great page, that one. It's such a good page. I was like, we're getting a war. They've got this island. They've effectively got a country. They're kind of, the suspense, they're trying to, you know, they've got their lawyers trying to yeah. sort of push it through and make it legit. Yeah. And then when the trooper comes down uh, and, you know, plants the flag, yeah. It's exciting stuff. Yeah, I mean, this is just just to recap. Um, the only difference here in the uh, crew for this issue is that Keith Williams is on inks this issue, but other than that, all the same. So didn't mention. Yeah, that uh, but yeah, this this issue redeemed it for me. I think this issue is miles better than issue forty. Uh, not miles better, but this this brought the level up for me. Um, yeah, this was. I was. This. I is, mean, you got rattlers oof. here taking off. You got. Um, yeah, because it's cool. Because it's like they know they're coming. It's like well, they're going to try and take it back real quick. Yeah. And the Joes are like, well, we've got to get, you know, we've got to sort this out. And launch, it's like, launch that yes. whale. And, uh, you know, Sky Strike is involved. Um, yeah, but he, he thinks he might not be able to take off because the, um, the, the, the flag is on the wonk, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. But, I mean, but Ace he, is the best man around if you want to, you know, if you, if you need a jet being flying. It's funny how that bit's drawn because it's meant to look like his, his wing is in the sea, even though he's like miles hundreds up. of feet, yeah. miles up. But anyway, it's pretty cool. He does some damage, but then he has to call it a day, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Roblox got the 50 cal as normal, just gunning people down. Um, he's quite good at taking out rattlers with that, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he's done it about three times. <laughs> yeah, he's taken out a few. You know, the twins are knocking around. Twins, I'm looking yeah, at this really... picture of the twins. You've got that the one there. Piece. Cod piece. Yeah, you the know, that's what piece. I was going to say. He's got a cod piece a la buzzer. I mean, maybe that's just a Rod Wiggum thing. Maybe he just likes drawing cod pieces. I mean, the man's going into war. Yeah. <laughs> I think He's I might ask. Kind of, I might um, ask Rod actually because I've ordered. I, I've gear. ordered some art off Rod. Uh, I've had a few, a few issues which will probably be my grinding my gears for next week. Um, with uh, uh, let's say some third parties who've been helping me to get this art from Rod. Um, but I'll go into that next issue. Uh, I'm going to ask him if he's. I need to contact him if he if he was directed by Larry to draw cod pieces or if he's just he was just into that kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll find out. I bet there's a great bit in this that you'd love, where Roblox and Gung Ho get the um, piece of wood. Yes. And whomp. Yeah, boom. Crimson Twins, get, get off that ferret. Yeah, yeah. chumps. Uh, Cobra quite, Commander it's... donning the, the battle mask is another favourite <laughs> scene of mine. It's, yeah, it's so brief. He's like, this is a, this is a nightmare. He goes out there and he, he comes back pretty sharpish, yeah. all battered up. Yeah. <laughs> this this <laughs> issue might feature in, you know, I think the favorite issues from the next series of awards we do for you definitely because it's oh there's, my word there's yes. so much this going on it's just high the shipwreck action there's barbecue barbecue gets oh, a great bit yeah he basically acts through the hiss driver's window that axe must have caved his skull in surely there yeah that's that's the bit that i really remembered that either they i th- i actually think the cartoon took a lot of inspiration from some of these panels and have included little bits of action right i think i think that's probably makes sense as well yeah just some of them just see i swear there's a bit in the he just does the exact same thing as that right um the i guess the only issue i had it's not really an issue is just how you know i was reading it like running down a hill i was like yes 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 and then it just ran out of juice when i was like oh it cuts it you, ended it cuts it you off cut. the, it cuts you off the knees because the page before the last page because the joes didn't even get it's just a big off. firefight zartan and the dudes is exchanging gunfire there's like you say cobra commanders come back my troops failed me my lawyers failed me they told me we could get official recognition and then explosions everywhere um, you think it's all going to go down and then like you say that last page is just 
um, hawk <laughs> on the he's on the horn. Hold your fire and keep it down. I love that. On he's duke, telling sorry. them to keep it down. Yeah. He doesn't think I'll just go around the back and take this. Yeah. He's like, hey, hey, guys, yeah. everyone just Pipe stop. Pipe down a minute. We've got an important <laughs> call coming in from Hawk. Both sides. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Hawk's there basically saying, terminate hostilities. No. Cobra Island has been officially recognized as a sovereign state. All GI Joe oh. personnel are to evacuate the island immediately. That's an order. Yeah, so I thought you'd have at least two or three panels there where you'd have some jive talking. Yeah from the joes and it's sort of just you know they're walking off with their tail between their legs yep. whilst they're having a good old chore tool yep. cobra commander's got a nice back lean he's <laughs> like yeah and then it does cut back to them and they look a little bit yeah. peeved okay well, why don't you go first on this one uh no so you, I, don't forget we're, so this is an arc so yeah you didn't like the first issue that much well but you loved I, the second I, I would have given the first issue a seven just as a, as you know, as a starting point, and then yeah. this issue is, it's either I think it's probably a low nine, so does that even out? I think that evens out for uh, eight Simple, yojos yeah. for me. Okay, I'm going. I'm coming in hot with a big fat nine. Yeah, thought so. Um, both, if I, you know, both nines. Time of my life reading that, chief. Yep. yep. Okay, so we'll give a nine. Uh, we're not going to wait, p- waste people's time telling you where we're putting it on our Every Joe Ever chart. We will provide links so you can look for yourself. Now, this was a, this was a bit, this was fun because I was like, okay, we've got something different now. Yep, we're going over to a yearbook. This is this is year this book. is quite hailed by a lot of GI Joe fans. I'm going to say you didn't like it. <laughs> well, no, I was excited, so I was going into it like quite pumped, and I loved the kind of eighties tastic cover yeah so just to clarify this is gi joe yearbook two um which was kind of a not an anthology but it was a recap book so it told readers you know it was almost a jumping on point um so it had lots of covers and it had talk about uh, gi joe tv show uh, etc what to expect in the future but it also had an original story called triple play um yeah so let's talk about that here so this is um Larry Harmer and Michael Golden, who also did the cover. So, yeah, the cover, what do you think of that? All the Joes on the front, shooting weapons, American flag in the background. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, nice image it's of Snake Eyes there, American torpedo, flag. Yeah, ripcord, roadblock and Lady J, like it. So th- yeah. this this basically is um, the October Guard are back. They have a new laser cannon, which they've outfitted on one of their hind helicopters. And Cobra have decided they want to try and steal that from the October Guard. And it's set in yeah. Afghanistan. I think I suffered from going straight into this after reading 40 and 41. Okay. Um, because, A, I found the art really jarring. And it's just not my style too at all. comedy-based? Yeah, way too kind of, okay, we've got vehicles moving forward, but to show that, we're going to have them sort of bend bendy wheels too, yep. you know a bit too cartoony i can see why people would like it and i could see why people would like the storyline but i also just did not like any of the dialogue so much talk of what weapons they're using yep. all the time see i i i i i I like the script here. I like I like the dialogue. Um, it was quite basic. Well, I, yeah, yeah. It's kind of a it's it is it's not a filler issue, but it is just a standalone one off. You know, with no real repercussions. Um, yeah, there's definitely the thing lots is, of action, lots of chase on. chase scenes and stuff. You know, I, yeah. I'm not, I'm I'm kind of in your camp in that the I can fully appreciate that the art is good. Yeah, it really um, is. Really is good. Um, but for me, it's, p- it's just p- perhaps like just a tiny bit too cartoony for me personally. I love the way he, Michael Golden, draws Destro though. Every panel and page Destro's in, I really like the way he draws him. Yeah, it's interesting because he kind of shows his teeth, and um, you sort of do think, okay, yeah. there is a guy under there. But then you also do get some, you know, there's uh, on page four. I don't know if you've got the page numbers in yeah. front of you. On page four, that that first kind of vertical panel. There's not much comedy in that panel. It's you know in the in the way it's drawn. So you've got a smoking hind um, flying off in the distance. The guy's running down the hill, and the way he's drawn that Land Rover, you know, highly detailed. You know, really kind of good stuff. Yeah. But then you go to the next page, and this is kind of what you were talking about, kind of twisty vehicles. Um, yeah. Just kind of OTT stuff. 
However, Firefly looks pretty cool. However, Firefly and Firefly's drawn really well, quite emotive. And there is one really good um, splash page, which I'm just going to find now, uh, which is page 17. Um, and this is the Cobra transport helicopter. And there's yeah, the, so cool because you get the bubble. There's the bubbles and the fangs and the kind of the perception and of it. You know, again, it's maybe yeah, a little bit bendy, but you know, I, that's, that's a really cool page. Yeah, first intro of Tele Viper. First intro which, of Tele Viper. Um, they're really cool. Um, uh, you know, the, the action. And also, I guess I had a slight issue with. There's some eels in this as well. The page before, the eels uh, have just gone uh, out the river and they planted explosives. Very you briefly, you catch them. At... But uh, page 15, yes. bottom. But why are they. Green, you're going to say? Just... Well. I think that's just a artist pink, impression. Aren't they? I got hmm. green vipers, uh, for eels in mine. I've got bright pink. Have you? On page mm. 15. Sorry, my pages are obviously I've got page numbers, okay. but they're not the actual page right. numbers of the they're the page numbers of the trade. Okay. So What's the dialogue saying? Uh that's where Firefly good work eels. Hmm. Just before that uh big splash page, a couple of pages before. I, oh, okay. I think the and there's another one where Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah, they're green. That's yeah, that's wicked. Yeah. I think it's just a shade or whatever. But I know what you're talking about. You're talking about pink. You're, that's, um, I think that's Dragonski. Um, yeah, sorry, who's on one of the page, October yeah. Guard. And he's dressed up in, and he's got a big flamethrower. Yeah, I also... That's a bit where there's you know, a cool panel before that where all the Cobras are jumping out of the helicopter onto the roof of the the train. Yeah. I just I didn't really like the dialogue on the last page where the Joes rock up. Yeah, because this is this is devoid and... of Joes at this point, and they pulled into they're on a train. They pulled into the port, and then the Joes are there waiting for them to basically steal the laser cannon. Um, yeah, this is where we felt, get felt quite propagandary. This is where we get Flint and Spirits there and Stalker. Yeah, yeah. And they kind of they fly off the flags there. They got what is that? Gulls, eagles. Yeah, you got some it gulls was... there or whatever seagulls. Probably, yeah. probably not eagles. No. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I didn't actually enjoy it that much. Okay. To be honest with you, there's another cool panel I quite like where um, the October guard are driving off in their vehicles, and uh, Colonel Breakov is throwing a bottle of vodka to Stormovic. No, to Horror Show. Sorry, in the front. But anyway, um, nice, nice colours. You know. Well, yeah, it's very vibrant, and it actually felt quite modern. Yeah. Yeah. You're giving. And you're giving really... it. You're giving it a six. Uh, I'm actually going to give it a five, Chief. Whoa. Yeah. I think... Do you know what with the yearbook? I think it's one of those things where if if you were reading these, you know, month to month, yep. and then you get a nice yearbook, and it's like, oh, this is really cool, you know, going back through some stuff. But in the context of what we're doing, yep. I was like, ah, oh, you know, I wanted issue 42. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And especially you know, like you said, having just read forty two. If you'd have read this first before forty one, yeah. forty two, I don't know. I mean yeah. we actually did read the yearbook a little bit too soon. That yearbook two would have kind oh, of really? bisected, I think, around issue forty five possibly. Oh, okay. Uh, well, we're, we've jumped we've jumped in now because uh next episode we will be reviewing issues forty two, forty three and forty four. Yeah, we're really flying through yeah. it. We're almost, well, we're almost a third through. Not quite, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, of the original run, yep, yep. Of the original we'll run. We'll be deciding at a much later date uh, in the year what we're going to do next um, after we finish out 155 issues plus yearbooks plus special missions of... Give us some shout-outs of what you of, guys want. the Real American Hero and closer to the time, you know, when we're sort of 20 issues away from the end, perhaps... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll post the question to guys whether you want us to carry on to the IDW continu uh, IDW run following this continuity, whether you want us to branch out into the Devil's Due press stuff, the image stuff, the IDW's own continuity, whatever. You know, we might even be able to have a couple of shows, whatever, whatever you guys want, uh, as long as we keep getting the listeners. Yeah, for sure. I mean, how are you feeling about the next? Um, obviously, you know what's coming. Is this? getting into sort of your sweet spot or we passed your no, sweet no, spot no 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 from from issue, we... from issue 21 is my sweet spot up until you know up until issue 75 ish is is ish. is okay. all quality but in fact i like it even a bit further up to you know up into the 90s well i, I right. like it all to be honest even the bad issues i like but um you know I, it's really strong uh, right up until the 90s i think 
Yeah. Well, okay. And then, of course, you've got late stuff, which happens right at the end of the 90s into 100, which is like re-game changes and stuff. So it's probably time for... Chief asks Ben a question. Chief asks Ben a question. What'll he say? What'll he do when Chief asks Ben a question? Oh, a little flourish yeah, you know, at the baby. end. Um, so my question is this. Um, going out for a leaving do for one of my colleagues next week, and we are looking for a... Well, I'm not personally because I've had my meat day for the week, but I know a lot of the guys would like to go to a fancy steakhouse. Um so, Why is he leaving? Did he did he not make a meet? <laughs> you know it, baby. No, uh, being forced out. He's a contractor, uh, and my company is making a move to go perm only. Um, oh, where does that put you? I'm a perm. You're... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. With a perm, I made that All change right. last year. Um, so we had we had uh, had suggestions of a chain called Hawksmoor. That's my answer, baby. But we can't get in there because our group's too big for the for the table. So they they declined us. Bullshit they declined visitor. us. How many people? Twelve. Man, maybe maybe it's just because you can't. I think it was the 12. time. I think it was the amount we had at the time we wanted. We wanted eight o'clock. Um, mm. But peak. Yeah, peak exactly. Oh, cheers! A fine steak. I mean, Are I you a big steak guy. I am not a big steak guy. I didn't think now, you were. Let's let's just recap. My mum's a butcher. My, mum, my mum's a butcher. So we had a lot of meat growing up. But um, never had much steak. <laughs> never had much steak, and I never really choice. Cuts. Never really got into it. I just never really got into steak. Yeah, don't really see no the one... appeal of it personally. But well, um, I know people. A good steak is something that people aspire to uh, eating. And what amazed me was, though, I am not a man who goes out fine dining. And I looked at. No, I think I, we've all gathered. I that. looked at the menu. Thirty six quid for a steak, and then you have got to have starters and sides Man, on top. More. Hawksmoor is big bucks, but it is worth the. Push. And then alcohol, I'm spending like sixty quid. You, I think the high pitchness of your voice, <laughs> um, you're in shock. I'm having palpitations. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm having a. I would have a fish dish from the menu. Anyway, uh, I saw a nice sea bass, which was twenty one quid. But anyway, um, steak is a funny thing. Well, in the UK, people don't really have it at home. You know, yeah. as it's sort of a family dinner, you don't get a round of steaks in. Feels like it's like the early 1900s. Yes, that. It's, it's a tr- it's a treat. Yeah. Um, I actually bought a a griddle because yes. I thought just for well, steak. Start. I'm going to start doing this at home because it's very quick. You get that thing so piping hot. You literally just yeah. either side because I like it blue. If anything, it just reminds like me. It just reminds rare. me of Billy from Beverly Hills Cop when he's having that conversation with Taggart in the car. Yeah, he's, he's reading like Time magazine. Time or magazine. Something. Did you know by the age of forty, the average American has ten pounds of red meat, undigested red meat in his bowels? What makes you think <laughs> I would even want to know that, Billy? <laughs> Love that movie. Oh, it's too. But yeah, I don't want undigested up. red meat in my bowels. Yeah. Uh, Where can they find us, Chief? Uh, they can find us in all the usual places. Talking Joe Comics at gmail dot com. Uh, actually, I'm going to give a shout out to someone who I forgot in a minute uh, after I've done all these. Um, we're on Talking Joe Comics uh, Instagram. We've got over 400 followers now. Oh man, um, yeah. 400 yeah, souls. You know it. We're on we're on 199 followers on Twitter, which is Talking underscore Joe. So How try many... and be number 200. I would yeah, say we'll give you a prize. 400... We'll give you a shout out instead. Do you think we've got 400 real people? Or do you think some of those are Russian robots? They're all real. No, yeah, solid. Uh, Facebook, you can find us, Talking Joe, a G.I. Joe podcast. Um, but yeah, we can find you. I know people can find you on uh, Ben Flying Retro. Yes, I'm doing a big push at the moment. Yes. I don't know what I'm pushing for. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I'm big on the Instagrams. Yeah, yeah. Find me on Chiefy yeah. Two Shoes on Twitter if you want. Uh <laughs> yeah. Uh, we yes. Yeah, so I just want to quickly jump back. We had an email come in this week. Emails. We get one a week now. Oh, it's good times. They're flooding this in. This is from. Awesome. Uh, I hope he doesn't mind me reading it out. It's from uh, Cole Burgett. I probably should have um, checked with him first. Uh, Where's the lad from? Uh, this guy. I'm assuming he's from. I think he's from the US. Um, and he's titled his email "Joes and Mythology." Um, he's he's a graduate student Heavy. in a seminary. Um, and he's doing work with modern uh, mythopoetic writing. What is that? Sounds exciting. Basically, he's studying he's the he's studying the works of people like Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, 
um, looking at films like Star Wars and X Files, and he's now started um, digging deep into GI Joe lore. That's so cool. Uh, yeah, this sounds cool, uh, Cole. Keep us updated. He's asked for some uh, places where we can send him to to find out more about GI Joe lore, etc. I'm going to send him an email this week. See if I can. Oh, fill the man fill, in. Fill him in. Uh, well, in in the UK, filling someone in means you're going to beat someone up. Uh, so we're not. I'm Does not, it? Yeah. Well, if you're going to fill someone in, have you not heard that before? Dude, I have never. When you fill someone in, you're filling them in with information. No, you're filling not- them in with punches to the face. Oh, no, 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 that's just your mind, chief. No, no. Uh, if you heard, okay. if you know the phrase "fill them in," as in beating them up, tweet us. Let us know on Instagram who's right here, chief or Ben. We've well, never been to a meeting where it's like, you know, fill us in, Ben. Yeah, it's got a double meaning. I'm, so, I'm not saying it doesn't mean that as well. It's got a double meaning. Not right. a double entendre. Chief but a just launches meaning. over the table and fills someone his fist down your anyway, throat. Anyway, yeah. So I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, reach out to to Cole. But um, sounds like he's doing good, good stuff there, and uh, he, he's he's tagged on to GI Joe, and he likes the podcast. So thank you for your support, sir. God, it sounds like we've got well a very intelligent listener yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> too too intelligent to listen to <laughs> both of us rambling on. Uh, we've gone long this. Christ. We've gone long this week, uh, but we obviously had the awards segment. So we hope you've stayed with us to the end. Uh, if, We've run over. As always, if you uh, want to support us, the best way you can do it is by giving us a review on iTunes. There's a funky algorithm that they run. No one knows how it works. All we know is that the more reviews and uh, ratings we get, it bumps us up the chart, which puts us uh, into more people's radar uh, when they're going and searching for us. So it makes us easier to find. And the, the higher we up we get, the better show we can give you guys. All that's left to say is... We'll catch you down the road. No, no.